Destalinization, Russian, Destalinization, Destalinization consisted of a series of political reforms in the Soviet Union after the death of longtime leader Joseph Stalin in 1953, and the ascension of Nikita Khrushchev to power. The reforms consisted of changing or removing key institutions that helped Stalin hold power, the cult of personality that surrounded him, the Stalinist political system, and the Gulag labor camp system, all of which had been created and dominated by him. Stalin was succeeded by a collective leadership after his death in March 1953, consisting of Georgi Malenkov, Premier of the Soviet Union, Lavrenti Beria, Head of the Ministry of the Interior, and Nikita Khrushchev, First Secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union CPSU. <laughs> Terminology issues The term, destalinization is one which gained currency in both Russia and the Western world following the collapse of the Soviet Union, and was never used during the Khrushchev era. However, destalinization efforts were set forth at this time by Nikita Khrushchev and the government of the Soviet Union under the guise of the "...overcoming, exposure of the cult of personality," with a heavy criticism of Joseph Stalin's "...era of the cult of personality." However, prior to Khrushchev's "...secret speech," To the 20th Party Congress, no direct association between Stalin as a person and the cult of personality was openly made by Khrushchev or others within the party, although archival documents show that strong criticism of Stalin and his ideology featured in private discussions by Khrushchev at the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet. <laughs> Silent destalinization There were dangers in denouncing Stalin as he was placed on a pedestal both at home and among communists abroad. In the years 1953-1955, a period of silent destalinization took place, as the revision of Stalin's policies was done in secret, and often with no explanation. This period saw a number of non-publicized political rehabilitations, such as Marshal Mikhail Tukhachevsky, Politburo members Robert Icke and Janis Rudzutaks, and those executed in the Leningrad Affair and the release of Article 58 ERs. However, due to the huge influx of prisoners returning from the camps 90,000 prisoners in 1954-55 alone, this could not continue. In December 1955 Khrushchev proposed a commission to be set up in order to investigate Stalin's activities on behalf of the Presidium. This investigation found out that out of the 1,920,635 arrested for anti-Soviet activities, who were arrested on fabricated evidence in the first place and confessed under torture authorized by Stalin's 688,503 were executed. Khrushchev's secret speech Destalinization meant an end to the role of large-scale forced labor in the economy. The process of freeing Gulag prisoners was started by Lavrenti Beria. He was soon removed from power, arrested on 26 June 1953, and executed on 24 December 1953. Nikita Khrushchev emerged as the most powerful Soviet politician, while destalinization was quietly underway ever since Stalin's death. The watershed event was Khrushchev's speech entitled, On the Cult of Personality and Its Consequences, concerning Stalin. On 25 February 1956, he spoke to a closed session of the 20th Party Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, delivering an address laying out some of Stalin's crimes and the "...conditions of insecurity, fear, and even desperation," created by Stalin. Khrushchev shocked his listeners by denouncing Stalin's dictatorial rule and his cult of personality as inconsistent with communist and party ideology. Among other points, he condemned the treatment of the old Bolsheviks, people who had supported communism before the revolution, many of whom Stalin had executed as traitors. Khrushchev also attacked the crimes committed by associates of Beria. Topic. Motivation One reason given for Khrushchev's speech was his moral conscience. Alexander Solzhenitsyn said that Khrushchev spoke out of a movement of the heart. This, the communists believed, would prevent a fatal loss of self-belief and restore unity within the party. Martin Macaulay argues that Khrushchev's purpose was to liberate party officials from the fear of repression. 
Khrushchev argued that if the party were to be an efficient mechanism, stripped from the brutal abuse of power by any individual, it could transform the Soviet Union as well as the entire world. However, others have suggested that the speech was made in order to deflect blame from the Communist Party or the principles of Marxism Leninism and place the blame squarely on Stalin's shoulders, thus preventing a more radical debate. However, the publication of this speech caused many party members to resign in protest, both abroad and within the Soviet Union. By attacking Stalin, Macaulay argues, he was undermining the credibility of Molotov, Malenkov, Kaganovich, and other political opponents who had been within Stalin's inner circle during the 1930s more than he had been. If they did not come over to Khrushchev, they risk ed being banished with Stalin and associated with his dictatorial control. Topic. Changes Topic. Improved prison conditions Khrushchev attempted to make the Gulag labor system less harsh, by allowing prisoners to post letters home to their families, and by allowing family members to mail clothes to prisoners, which was not allowed under Stalin. When Stalin died, the Gulag was radically reduced in size. On 25 October 1956, a resolution of the CPSU declared that the existence of the Gulag labor system was inexpedient. The Gulag institution was closed by the MVD Order No. 020 of 25 January 1960. Renaming of places and buildings Khrushchev renamed or reverted the names of many places bearing Stalin's name, including cities, territories, landmarks, and other facilities. The state anthem of the Soviet Union was purged of references to Stalin. The Stalin-centric and World War II era lines in the lyrics were effectively excised when an instrumental version replaced it. The Joseph Stalin Palace of Culture and Science in Warsaw, Poland was renamed in 1956. Topic. Destruction of monuments The Yerevan monument was removed in spring 1962 and replaced by Mother Armenia in 1967. Thousands of Stalin monuments have been destroyed not only in the Soviet Union, but in other former communist countries. In November 1961, the large Stalin statue on Berlin's monumental Stalinali promptly renamed Karl Marx Allee was removed in a clandestine operation. The monument in Budapest was destroyed in October 1956. The biggest one, the Prague Monument, was taken down in November 1962. Topic. Relocation of Stalin's body Given momentum by these public renamings, the process of destalinization peaked in 1961 during the 22nd Congress of the CPSU. Two climactic acts of destalinization marked the meetings. First, on the 31st of October 1961, Stalin's body was moved from Lenin's mausoleum in Red Square to a location near the Kremlin Wall. Second, on the 11th of November 1961, the Hero City, Stalingrad was renamed Volgograd. Topic: <laughs> Extent of destalinization. Contemporary historians regard the beginning of destalinization as a turning point in the history of the Soviet Union that began during the Khrushchev thaw. It subsided during the Brezhnev period until the mid-1980s, and accelerated again with the policies of perestroika and glasnost under Mikhail Gorbachev. Destalinization has been considered a fragile process. Historian Polly Jones said that, "...re-Stalinization," was highly likely after a brief period of thaw. Anne Applebaum agrees, the era which came to be called the Thaw was indeed an era of change, but change of a particular kind. Reforms took two steps forward, and then one step or sometimes three steps back. Topic. See also Anti fascism, Anti Stalinist left, History of the Soviet Union 1953 to 1964 Stalinization and the Khrushchev era Kareka village List of places named after Joseph Stalin Denazification Decommunization Topic References <references>